Welcome back to Advancing with Watercolor. <clears throat> I'm Gary Tucker and I'm going to be uh, doing a few videos based on a recent trip to Italy where I demonstrated in front of my students and uh, talk about such things as composition, um, color, edges, shapes, and uh, some of the thinking processes that go into my work. Here's a beautiful picture of our group. We had a wonderful week in Bellagio painting at various places. Today we're working at the Melzi Gardens, uh, which is a beautiful venue. This is the approach to the Melzi. Just to, after entering, you, you approach the, uh, the formal gardens. And uh, it was here that I decided to set up and do a painting. One of the reasons is I felt the composition uh, revealed an interesting uh, painting, an interesting picture. Part of that is due to the fact of the path that leads in, the surrounding cypress trees, and the shadows that fell across the landscape. And so I, <clears throat> I started by doing a, a black and white image uh, to get warmed up, as I typically do, and then I moved into a color painting of the same image. And if you look at this uh, view of the black and white image, you can see that I've made some changes. I've put the path on more of an angle, and I've um, pushed some of the trees to the left. I'm putting the, uh, the horizons on, horizon a little lower to make the trees feel a little larger. And so I'm starting this painting um, with a sketch, and I'm going to be painting the background first in a light color of blue. But as I'm making it, I'm uh, trying to indicate or uh, allude to the trees that are in the background. Uh, sorry, not the trees, the clouds. A very shallow and weak statement of clouds, but the angles that I use I feel are important. Also, the fact that I'm leaving some of the white of the paper is important. Well, maybe you can use it as a reference later. Yes, that would be great. We are great copycats. Yeah, and we forget too, don't we? <laughs> it always saves the day. Now what are we doing? Painting the same thing with color? Mm -hmm. I think so. Oh, you mean the bird. Ah, that he always puts in. He always puts in one bird. One bird. Yeah. And he, I'm not sure if I think he called bird. The bird. The bird. I love the sound of birds. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's turn this into grass. And then you narrate over it? Yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of cursing that happens. So in making this <clears throat> first pass with the blue, what I'm thinking of is some diagonal shapes, um, which are basically the whites that I've left, um, indicating clouds. You can vaguely see them in the photograph. And th what these do is they kind of pull the eye up, or they can also lead the eye down. And uh, since they're pale, they're not a strong um, element. However, they do counter, they will counter the angles of the mountains and the angle of the path. So uh, for me, they're useful to create this sort of movement through the painting, very much following a, a lazy S or a Z, uh, which is a typical compositional stem. Um, and now you see I've, I've started to place uh, the grass, a very yellow application. This is going to be the bright or dappled light that we see eventually through the shadows. So I'm going a bit brighter than it appears in the photograph, than it appeared in reality, in fact, uh, to build up a, a, the possibility of contrast and a play of light and shadow in the foreground. lavender for the mountains, blue and red. Basically, this, uh, my color palette is um, blue against yellow, blue against yellow throughout the scene. Absolutely, I cannot continue. Yeah, I know. 
using two primary colors? Uh, yes, two primaries, rather complementary in nature. Very nice. Huh? Thing is to remember, this is just a background, so we don't have to be too worried about it. about that church up there. How close to over? that church. <laughs> <laughs> How would you get to that church? Oh. <laughs> Is it a day's journey, a month's journey? A lifetime's Pilgrims, journey, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Pilgrims. Pilgrims, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, with the basically first wash, we've already got the foundation for the grass, the illuminated part of the grass. We've got uh, a feeling of the water behind the mountain behind that, the sky above that. And I know it's not, what I picked up on uh, with the sky is the particular angles. I love the way that it creates a little bit of a V that counters this V, right? This um, oblique. Uh, I like that movement in the background. We're gonna have some strong verticals that are gonna push everything back and hide a lot of that, but that creates a little bit of energy. Rather than painting um, the clouds too perfectly, I left you know, a lot of just a strong white paper. This will have the foreground. Basically, I'm going to follow this idea tonally in terms of light and dark, but so I painted my light areas. I can put a little color on the pathway. And there I'm going to take from the pink that I used in that blue uh, to create the pathway. Very light. Let it dry, and then add the more difficult part is to follow with the trees, the shadows, figures, etc. Well, in this first application, I've tried to be rather loose. I let a lot of the white paper show through. And now in the second application, um, I'm going to be placing bolder, stronger brush strokes, darker pigment, and mixing on the paper. Um, I apologize for that bar of shadow that's creeping across. Here comes the sun. Do 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 do. Here comes the sun. Do 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 do. And I say it's all right. Dear 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 dear. Little darling, it seems like. Since it's been here, da 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 little darling. I think it helps to sing a little bit while you're struggling, right? Yes. singing too, Stuart. Okay. You missed it. Not loudly enough. I haven't heard you up there. We were singing Here Comes the Sun. Here Comes the, the Sun. sun. Dee -dee 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 -dee. So I started with this simple blue, right? Nice. Leaving some white of the paper for a semblance of clouds that we see. Right. And they've assembled just like I painted them. <laughs> they follow instructions better than we do. The mountains. I've moved a mountain because I can. Mm -hmm. Moved it over here, looks better. 
the city so far, the water so far, and the bright, luminous grass. Now I get to play with that dark mid-tone in the trees. And I'm wondering what color combination. Should, I'm going to mix the paper, the color right on the page. They're sunstruck on the left. Yeah, but it's not that much it's contrast. It's too complicated for you. Yeah. Not that much because it's such a dark green. Is this still morning walk? Morning walk through Nelson Gardens. I'm going to be as consistent as possible. But I'm doing something a little unique here, which is to mix color right on the page. And I'm doing that because number one, it's, it's going to dry super fast. Number two, the color will dry in a more pleasing way, I believe, if we mix it right on the paper. So I'm just creating a few colors before I start here. And any comments that you make will be recorded. Just yes. beware. I want you to know. Now watch what we say. Geez, I wonder what he was doing that for. Yeah. What was he thinking? All right, here we go. I was there. Yes. So, where's my strokes? I had one here. I had a skinny one here. Oh, let's just start. Yes, it looks so dark, doesn't it? <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> it looks dark, dark painfully dark, but it's okay. Why wouldn't you make green for the green tree? Uh, there is some green here. It's going to dry a little green. If I want more green, I take this yellow, and blend while it's wet. Mm, okay, you do it on the paper. Yeah. So pretty thick. Very thick. Mm. Well, you can see I'm building up the trees pretty much based on the form and tonality. As I mentioned, I'm mixing the color on the page using cad yellow, a bit of burnt sienna, one to feel very warm. And then when I need um, a little stronger feeling of shadow, I place uh, ultramarine blue mixed with a bit of glycerin crimson and a little bit of neutral tint uh, to the side or under the eaves <clears throat> of the trees that I'm trying to uh, create form with. But done very much with the drush, dry brush. As you can see when I'm working, the, the brush tends to fray a little bit and gives me an advantage. I believe it gives me a stronger edge, a uh, more natural edge to the trees. And I, I prefer this, so very often I'll let the paint expire and then continue to create the edges of the trees with a very uh, dry brush. When I need a little accent, I'll pick up some new paint, some darker paint, and come close to the figures as I'm doing now. And um, this is pretty much following uh, the plan. Nothing has really gone awry yet, which I'm grateful for because it's the first painting of the trip and I want to impress everybody. I want to get off to a good start. Uh, one of the advantages of working in an area like this, the Villa Melzi or any uh, gardened area is it's already been composed for us as I walk through the gardens I turn my head I see a another composition I look down the road I see another composition I look uh, to a piece of sculpture I see another composition because the gardeners have taken gardeners or I should say the landscape architect has taken a lot of consideration on the particular views that you might enjoy while you're walking through the garden. So as a painter we can take advantage of this. We can um, stop at a point where the composition uh, is striking and 
since things are already sort of placed to us, we basically follow. We have the option to just kind of follow what we see. In the case of my painting, I did take a couple, make a couple of changes to the shape of the road, um, the staggering of the trees a little bit, but I feel in essence I'm pretty much following to the layout of the garden. Um, and so I proceed this way, building up this deep, deep green, which uh, I feel is kind of the mid-tone in this painting, and I'm going to extend that on the left side, kind of uh, shaping a, a tunnel, as it were, an overhead feeling uh, to the tree on the left side, which I have broadened a little bit from the photograph, and you'll notice that as I start to place it. And then this dark, uh, which is greenery for the most part now, will join with the shadow that I place along the foreground and creating a, a strong frame for the figures moving through the, the piece. As you can see, I'm using a dry brush extensively now up above. Uh, the brush is frayed and I'm just dragging it across and uh, confident that it's going to give me a pattern that resembles a tree. Uh, I've grown accustomed to using the brush this way, um, so I'm, I feel natural and I feel inclined to use it. If you're <clears throat> new to that, if you're uh, not so used to using dry brush, it may feel quite awkward, but with practice and with uh, certainly with these natural forms of trees and rocks, grass, clouds, etc., uh, this technique works much better when we start to create symmetrical objects. It's not quite as useful. But I'm enjoying the process now because I'm, I'm seeing the trees develop in a way that I thought they might. And all that painting of clouds and mountains has in part been obscured, but the parts that we're leaving are certainly important. So we're enjoying ourselves immensely. The, the people, the staff at Villa Melzi, have been very kind, and, and I think they encounter a lot of painters uh, day to day, and they've allowed us to work on the grounds unobstructed. Uh, and uh, so we can spread out. They, they've asked us to stay off the grass in parts, but for the most part, they've said, go wherever you want and paint whatever you want. And uh, as an artist, I really appreciate this. Yes, so here you can see I've, I've uh, gone into a lighter color on the left and now applying some real strong thick paint to give it a feeling of form, to give this tree a feeling of form, and to really uh, finish off that dry brushwork that I did in the beginning. Where is your companion today? My friends are they love him. Okay. <laughs> they love him. Ah. <laughs> they like friends. <laughs> 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 Ah, this adopted family. Yeah. It's beautiful. And he is spoiled, I think. Sure. It should be. This is the way it should be. They give us all their love. So why not spoil them? Yeah, I love him. He's my partner and my personal trainer. Yeah. Personal trainer? <laughs> yeah, because I have to go down to walk with him. I see. Okay, now we go. You're standing in the sun. I know. I'm trying to like do a little energy. I can see you over here. Really? Well, you see, the reason that I like that, uh, the weather we had this morning. A little easier to work, huh? A lot easier to stand anywhere you want. and a little black or leftovers.
that pink now comes through. Can you see? Yeah, and how did you do the pink? The pink was placed before, first yeah. layer, and la allowed to dry. Oops. Mm -hmm. Where's the pink? Oh, here. Coming through. Yeah, yeah coming through the blue as, it, as the shadows move over. Just mix whatever is close and pray. <laughs> Sometimes my prayers are answered. It's a little distracting to see that line, but I think it's going to work out okay. Yeah. So let's continue by adding some details. such as pants. If the painting doesn't have pants, it's a little odd. And we're also gonna give a little darkness to the right side. Make the light a little sharper. And they need a shadow too. She has a hat, big sun hat. Needs a shadow too. And the title of the painting, midday, I think that. No, I'm still in the morning. So this is long shadows, which we see either late afternoon or morning time. You said that you don't add the trousers and the legs, <laughs> but just don't. Um, um, uh, I know, just so that the people can imagine now that should be the two, part of the two legs. Yes. Mm. Also, it breaks this line, and that helps to bring them inside the road more. If I don't put it, it's, they almost appear like they're floating on the road. So uh, just bringing this uh, line just across the road a little bit makes it feel, you know, brings them forward in the painting. Uh -huh. These people, we just go a little dark. We don't have to be so specific. Color can be anything. More important is the darkness of the hue. Lining up the head so we feel like we're on level ground. and we'll make a little group. So uh, we'll talk a lot about people this week mm -hmm. because it, uh, I know it's a struggle for, for us in painting. Okay. But one thing, um, painting them small like this kind of reminds you what's important and what's not. So if we see a torso with a stick and a ball, you know, you got a pretty good person for this distance. And we show a little more clarity, detail in the people that are closer and we understand by association that they're people too. A little shadow under the hat. Here I'll put, uh, I like to put groups. You see when we kind of group them in odd numbers, it feels a little more natural, a little more interesting. Some children as well as adults. And, you know, dog. I think so. I think we need a dog. 
Yeah. You know right. I like dogs, yes? <laughs> I know. So how big a dog is going to be very small, but very important. So we put them kind of in the tail. That's enough. Mm -hmm. If you do more than that, it starts to look like a spider or something. <laughs> And to me, this is pretty much done. I might add some shadow color to, back, to the back of this. Hmm. And pure black. And you notice I left him a little pale and a little fragmented there. If it's too dark and too hard edge, it takes away. When they come into that blue area of the mountain, then I can go with the harder edge and it's not going to be as distracting. So I always concern about the edges, the tonality, the size of the head. It's very important. If the head is too big, it looks like a child. The head should be on the small side, even if it's a pin head, it's okay. And I try to stray, stay to the idea that I started with. It's really tempting to follow the light and become concerned about depicting what's in front of our eyes, but actually what's remaining in our memory of when we started is more important. So I look at this for that reminder, try to remember the shadows, try to remember the coolness that was moving through here. Well, if I can say good enough, then I walk away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, being able, if you say good enough, that, that means, well, okay, we, we could do something or it could be better, and we understand and accept that, but it's close enough for us for today. $500. So, that's so, your, yeah, your rating. I think when you put the price here and the people are passing by, the, you will find the person who will buy it. Yeah. But it happens that the people ask us to buy. Yes. I think. Especially if they're in, uh, they're in it. If they're in the, yeah. If they're same. in the scene. Yeah. They're not necessarily painted in the scene, but if they're enjoying the same scene we are and they yeah, feel, they oh, have a he, he captured or she captured something of what I love about this. Mm. They're very motivated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. Too. And if they're watching you mm -hmm. as it's coming into being, even more motivated. Because mm -hmm. it's almost like they experienced a performance. Mm. Right? Yeah. You know, with another media, it's hard to build this up this fast. This painting, less than 45 minutes. It's mm -hmm. wonderful. This For is you. really wonderful. <laughs> I will give you f f uh, 50. Okay. And take with me to, to my... Oh. I'll uh, keep to that in mind. mind. Okay. If you... If someone, you know, if you make the auction, so maybe I will raise. Yeah. <laughs> I start the auction from fifty. Okay. For this. All right. I'll tell my my crew to raise the price in the auction. <laughs> that way, I know I make a sale. Oh, Are you with the gallery? Okay. Uh, yes, I'm in a couple, color, couple galleries in uh, Boston. Um, and Boston is a good area for painting, especially the North Shore. There's a long history there. So some, a lot of people go there just to buy. Mm -hmm. And just to buy? Mm -hmm. Give me the address. Sure. <laughs> when you come to visit I me in Boston, yes. I'll take you there. Oh, really? Yeah, I'd yeah. like to. It's such yeah. a beautiful area. You love it. Yeah. I don't think it quite compares with Bellagio, but it has a sort nice. of rustic working mm. beauty. Don't mm. tell that to the people in Gloucester. They think it's... Bellagio is nothing. Mm. Having never been there, most of them. Oh, I can stop this. Well, we certainly had a great day painting beside Lake Como at Melzi Gardens in Bellagio today. It was originally forecast to be a rainy day. We persevered, we went outside, and as we walked down the path, the sky seemed to clear. Everybody had a great time and uh, produced a good painting. It was a, uh, the day flew by because we were just having such a great time and, and working hard. Certainly we were working hard to, to realize some of the landscape that we saw. And this continues throughout the week. 
here's the finished piece, and I believe you can see in this um, this quick painting uh, the thoughts that I had towards composition, uh, using the the road and the left whites in the painting to kind of zigzag through, and carry the eye to the back and and further back to this to the small city on the mountain and even higher into the to the sky. Uh, hopefully the light is conveyed as well, uh, and uh, I feel we're off to a good start. You can find a list of materials that I use as well as um, um, other supplies uh, in the description below this video. You'll also see a, a link to my website where you can find information on classes, information on um, workshops or demonstrations that I'm giving. and. Uh, Subscribe to my website because I'm always sending out uh, little tidbits of information and on watercolor related activities. Anyway, thanks and talk to you again soon.